So welcome everybody to the next session. First, before I forget it, I was advised to remind everyone that we should not leave through the side glass door, but if you want to leave the room, then please use the main entrance straight on the back. Um, unfortunately, uh, the glass door cannot be closed because it's an emergency fire exit, <laughs> um, but please use the main entrance on the, on the back. So then, welcome everybody, um, and thanks for coming. Um, still an early morning after data night out, at least for me. So I'm glad you're here and you made it. Um, yeah, the title is called Modernizing BI Landscape and Culture at Heidelberg Cement. Um, my name is Dominic Roof. I'm a self-service BI expert um, and in the role of the global product owner of Tableau at Heidelberg Cement. So in this early morning, maybe do a little bit of interaction at the beginning to get you awake. <laughs> um, I would be interested to know um, who has heard of Heidelberg Cement before? Can you maybe just put your hands up? Oh, that's quite some, cool. Um, and um, who has worked with Tableau since less than two years? Okay, that's cool. And more than two years? I guess that's the rest then. Great, so maybe half-half. Interesting. And um, I would also be interested, what's your role? Are you based in IT somewhere in your role? Okay, and the rest is then somewhere in a business function or a department? Okay, so we have a nice mixture, I think, and I hope I have something relevant and interesting for all of you. So uh, let's give a quick overview what you can expect from this session. Um, first, um, especially if Tableau is rather new in your company and you're interested in how to grow the adoption of Tableau, um, then I hope uh, you will benefit and learn from my content. Um, also, if you're more experienced, you might still pick up some inspirations or new ideas, um, how to grow adoption or how to do things. So um, mainly I will show you practical examples how we apply the newly out Tableau blueprint in our organization. Um, um, how we did our tool evaluation approach. So if you are at the very beginning of your self-service analytics journey, maybe still thinking about, should you use Tableau or something else? Um, but then mainly that will be the, the major part of the presentation, um, how we deal with all the different aspects of Tableau blueprint. Um, yeah, strategy, working with SAP BW, um, several governance aspects. I will show you practical examples how we deal with different topics, um, how we set up the user training and enablement, and what kind of community activities um, we established um, to uh, drive and increase the engagement of the users. All this, um, I will also show you several examples of dashboards that we are using to, to track uh, the different measures. Um, yeah, due to the timing, um, uh, these will be mainly screenshots, um, but still um, you will see uh, several of our dashboards. And finally, I'm also here to enjoy Tableau Conference and learn as much as possible. So I'm also looking forward to the Q&A session at the end to collaborate uh, with you and um, maybe we can learn both from each other and share our experiences. So, quick introduction of myself. Um, I'm more the IT guy um, with an informatics uh, diploma, and I have a very long history of SAP, business warehouse, and business objects. And just since two years, we introduced Tableau, um, which was also where I really enjoyed and liked this new way of doing BI, and where I kind of moved my focus from SAP to Tableau, but still, of course, we are working very closely together in one department. Um, personally, I have two kids and I love to play table tennis. Um, yeah, so then 
quick introduction for those who didn't know Heidelberg Cement or also maybe for the rest to have a quick overview of what we're doing. And also I want to describe you our previous BI situation before Tableau um, to kind of give you the reasons why we introduced it finally. So Heidelberg Cement is one of the largest integrated building material producers in the world. Um, here on the map, uh, you see all the, the green colors are the countries that we are active in. These are about 60 countries in the world where we have in total 3,000 production sites. Um, we have three main business lines. First, aggregates, or for the Germans we call it Zuschlagstoffe, so that's uh, sand and gravel, stones basically. Then we are number two in the world in cement and number three in ready-mixed concrete. And this is what makes us uh, unique, that we are integrated above all these ingredients, yeah? aggregates, cement, and the end product, concrete. So we can deliver everything to our customers. Here are a couple of numbers. So we have a very old, long history, a very traditional business. And um, what's important also to understand for the following of the session, um, that cement is a very commoditized business so it's like buying gasoline there is not much big difference between the different competitors or brands so the main differentiator uh, is price and maybe customer service quality or customer orientation um, but that's why we are very cost focused and have to try to do everything as efficient as possible and there I will also show you several examples how we try to maximize our uh, return on invest or our value with the lowest amount of money possible. Um, yeah, um, uh, we always operate with local brands that in most cases uh, we acquired at some time back. So uh, looking at those countries with the most attendees here at Tableau Conference, I have some examples. So if you are from UK or from uh, America, you might know Lehigh or Hansen, um, which belongs to us. If you are from uh, the Netherlands or Belgium, you might know those brand names. Or if you are from France, you might know Simon Calcia or Unibeton. Um, Likewise, from Italy, um, Ital Cementi is also part of our group. Then I want to show you also some visual pictures, as it's all about visualizing, yeah, uh, to get an impression of what we do. Um, so now let's see if the video is going to work. Great. So here we see all the business lines, cement production, uh, that's here, the big plants. Then here is the aggregates business, control rooms in the plants, operations, the super heavy trucks that can carry up to 80 tons of material in one load. We are also uh, having a lot of activities around biodiversity and environmental protection. CO2 reduction, it's an all mouse. We are also operating our own trading company with ships, etc. to uh, move the different um, products around. and also a lot of laboratory to ensure quality and uh, stability, uh, basically to make everything secure and stable. Um, yeah, and this is our German ready-mix brand, Heidelberger Beton. So, some background of our previous um, BI uh, environment. So, as 
several might have the same uh, challenges. Uh, users were complaining that the tools to do BI that were available for end users were too complex. Um, changes were too slow. Overall, it was very IT dependent. Um, so the user had not so much self-service capability or only a very small amount of very skilled users was able to do analytics. Um, and it was mostly non-visual, like Excel. Um, yeah, so this kind of um, now first give us little bit of background about our Tableau environment. Um, so at the moment, we have about 200 creator users and 600 server users. Um, yeah, and they already created quite a lot of content, as we see, 340 workbooks and 1,600 views um, so far um, that are published to the server. Of course, we don't see what they do in addition on their local computers. So these challenges led us to um, the decision to introduce or look for a self-service visual analytics tool. And we started with a market evaluation. And um, basically, we looked at the Gartner's Magic Quadrant and uh, took those from the leader, plus SAP, because we were using SAP all the time. Um, that was kind of given to be part of the evaluation. And initially, we did the market research for all the five different products uh, just on paper um, with a weighted uh, list of criteria, which were must-haves or nice-to-have criteria. And then we shortlisted uh, from five products to two. And then uh, this time, we wanted to do things different. In the past, it was always IT which decided, OK, this is going to be the tool that you have to use but we wanted to be more user-oriented this time and involved our business users in the decision process. So we set up workshops with the users um, from all the departments that were complaining the most before <laughs> um, about the deficiencies. And we actually spent almost a whole week with the users, two days for each tool, and we basically gave them half a day of training and one and a half days per tool, they had to bring their own use cases to the room and work with the tool on the use cases. So it was also kind of uh, a check if after just half a day of training, the tool is so easy to use that they already can start working with it. Um, and of course, then we asked the users for their feedback, and this is the outcome. So. Um, most importantly, um, these are also the high-level criteria we were using in the evaluation. Uh, the most important criteria was, would this tool bring benefit to your daily work? And there you see the clear difference that uh, they said 90% of the users, almost everyone said, yes, Tableau would bring benefit to my work. Whereas for the competitors, not even half of the participants of the workshop um, could confirm this. And also on all the other criteria, Tableau was uh, better or at least the same uh, rating as the competitor tool. Now I want to bring everything a bit into context. So at the same time when we started the self-service tool evaluation, um, our board came up with the vision that we want to become a data-driven company. Um, so we launched a bigger program consisting of several projects, um, where Tableau is one important pillar of it, but there is more behind. And I want to quickly uh, introduce you to this context. So everything uh, I'm showing, I will also correlate with the newly announced Blueprint adoption plan. Um, I guess you might already be familiar, so I go very quickly over that. So there is a discover phase, which I will talk about a governance part, which I will show you examples, uh, the deployment and the evolve part. And of course, especially in the evolve part, there are some aspects we still need to tackle in the future. So I will also show you our next step plans. So let's start with the discovery part, uh, strategy and team setup. Um, this is basically um, the, the context of our data-driven Heidelberg Cement program. So the main reason why we were doing this uh, was that the existing systems 
mainly with SAP Business Warehouse system, uh, were not able to handle the future data growth, especially looking into new initiatives like IoT, Industry 4.0, uh, coming up where we want to collect sensor data from the 3,000 production plants and use this to make analysis for continuous improvements, predictive maintenance, and so on. Um, so we needed something new. And how we're we doing this? Um, so we mainly have two major data storage platforms, um, SAP Business Warehouse um, for HANA and uh, Hadoop Data Lake for the more unstructured or, or big data and mainly with Tableau as the front end. From the approach, um, as our resources were very limited at the beginning and still are, um, we had to focus very much. So we have chosen three lighthouse projects um, where we try to support them as much as possible and enable them. We also allowed all the other users to join Tableau, but with very limited support and enablement from our side at the beginning. So we had a clear focus, um, make the lighthouse projects work, and then we already see a clear benefit and can scale it further based on this. From the approach, um, we were doing a so-called greenfield implementation for the BW for HANA, so not a one-to-one uh, -one migration, but we wanted to use the opportunity uh, to do a complete redesign and mainly a simplification, harmonization of the data models to make the data much more consumable for self-service users as in the past on the old systems and old data models. Yeah, so that's the overview of the high-level architecture. Um, if you look at the front-end part, initially during the tool evaluation, we thought that Tableau would probably just enhance and complement our existing tool portfolio. But um, later on, we learned that Tableau actually can also replace several of the existing SAP and business objects tools. And now our plan is that we will have Tableau plus mainly BO analysis for Office for those SAP users who are familiar with that. Um, uh, so we have just two tools mainly um, and, and not like 10 or uh, more as before. This is kind of the evolution uh, on a high level of Tableau, uh, how we introduced it. So. Um, Around uh, end of 2017, uh, we took the final decision after the evaluation, and then we immediately started to uh, prepare uh, what we call the pilot environment and let the user start working with it without even having a lot of concepts or governance in place because the pressure was very high from several business users to just start using it. So, and then we did a so-called technical evaluation in parallel. So we did not use the classical approach to finish everything, our evaluation whatsoever, and then only at the end let users work with it. So we did this in parallel um, to increase the type to value for the users. During this technical evaluation, we uh, mainly checked that Tableau is compatible with BW for HANA, with Hadoop, and so on. We also had a very interesting use case that we used for the end-to-end -end testing to collect the sensor data, uh, store them in the data lake, and use Tableau to report it in almost real time, um, where we used um, um, our asphalt business line, um, uh, where we checked the uh, amount of bitumen, which is uh, the biggest cost driver, like more than 80% of the end cost of the product is related to the bitumen. Um, and by just using Tableau to visualize the amount of bitumen in each batch that we mix for the truck, um, we were able to um, figure out that um, we are sometimes overdosing the bitumen just a little bit, 0. Point something percent. But with this, the business uh, were able to optimize uh, the, the recipes to reduce the amount of bitumen and thus reducing a large amount of costs. And at the end, um, we even calculated uh, that for just a single plant, uh, they were able uh, to save more than 100,000 euro per year um, with just visualizing the data. Um, 
Only then, like almost one year later, end of 2018, we introduced a so-called production environment and there we started to introduce more governance. Uh, before it was very chaotic, I would say, but still did work and users were happy that they could just use the tool. And um, what's also important to mention is that from the very beginning when we provided the pilot environment, um, we started regular user meetings and uh, launched a Tableau community platform for collaboration in Microsoft Teams. Uh, we also then started in Q3 2018 the Enterprise Adoption Consulting Program together with Tableau, where in a minute I will explain a bit more about it. Um, and with this we could start then to offer regular doctor sessions, uh, offer the first trainings and so on to do more in the enablement. Before the users were mainly alone because we also didn't have the deep knowledge to train and enable users, so those early adopters kind of just learned it by themselves with the available free resources online and so on. Yeah, what are our learnings regarding team setup? Uh, recommendations we can give you. So uh, what we learned, starting small is possible. So initially we just had like one and a half um, people dealing with Tableau and uh, that's possible. But of course, the consequence is that everything, especially adoption, will be much slower. Yeah? If you are able to make this transparent to your management and they are fine with it, you can start with quite a small amount of budget or resources and then grow on your own speed um, as needed. I would also recommend to form a dedicated new Tableau team. Uh, so we learned that part-time resources um, yeah, do not work out so well because then you don't have really the time to learn and get into Tableau. Yeah? So it's better to kind of shift the work and have people focus on just doing Tableau full time. Um, what we also learned because we were so limited, um, new FTEs were not approved or only very late approved and on a small amount. Um, uh, I looked out for alternatives, what we can do, and um, we had several programs available in the company anyways for like dual students that have practical phases for three months at the company, um, or we have trainees um, who spend six months in several departments after they complete the trainee program, and um, we were able to uh, get uh, really uh, great um, yeah, people in there, and they are probably here in the room as well. Um, so thanks a lot, and this is a cheap way, and as Tableau is so easy to learn, they can very quickly add value for the users and enable them or whatever, take over different tasks. So this was another thing we learned. Um, also, an executive sponsor is highly beneficial to adoption. Yeah. Initially, uh, we were more doing this from the ground up. Um, uh, only then, like when we started with the production environment, after a year, um, we um, got our CIO as the sponsor for the Tableau initiative. And even so, this is not from business, but he could speak to the people on his level in the organization and spread the word about Tableau and how great it is, and this helped a lot as well. <coughs> and finally, um, we were also uh, able to use the enterprise adoption consulting as an accelerator or kind of to remove some of the um, uh, limitations we had. So for those who are not aware of this, that's kind of um, uh, fixed consulting package that you can buy from Tableau Consulting Services and um, then you can basically use it for any resources from Tableau that you may need yeah, um, based on demand. So it's very flexible and um, we mainly used it to overcome resource or skill gaps, especially at the beginning. So we did the first doctor sessions trainings with uh, external support, um, of course on a very li limited and small scale. Um, and later on, we took this over with internal people as soon as we had um, uh, the internal knowledge available. It also gives you access to the best domain experts, so um, we were able to drag in punctually 
uh, experts, for example, regarding integration with BW for HANA and Tableau, or um, with uh, different mapping and geo-visualization topics, um, and so on. So this was quite helpful as well. Um, and of course, um, we got access to all the best practices. Um, of course, they are out there in the public and community. You can also have a look yourself, but um, it's very handy to have someone guiding you through everything. Um, um, yeah, then we are also part of the customer success program, um, which is another thing. Um, this one actually is for free if you are allowed to participate. So for those who are already included, you might have uh, seen the presentation on Monday afternoon um, on the conference. Um, what we get out of this, so we have monthly status update calls with our success manager that you can see here, Martin. Um, they provided us with a customized success plan and a roadmap for increasing adoption and so on. Um, they arranging on-demand uh, web sessions with several product managers from Tableau for the different topics um, to have roadmap calls, get a early preview and demo of upcoming features or um, clarify some, some special topics or also kind of um, put in your feature requests. Um, also another advantage was that uh, Martin was able to speed up the processing of support cases uh, when it was urgent. Yeah. So uh, that's another um, advantage we got out of that. So now this was the discovery part. I want to move further to governance, how we deal with governance. So first, there is a very boring but unavoidable topic uh, here in Europe, especially general data protection law. Um, we all want to establish a data sharing culture. However, GDPR is all about minimizing the access um, to personal data. So that's a, a big clash and it's, it's an ongoing challenge. So I wanted to quickly explain how we are dealing with the topic and might also be interested to hear later um, how you are dealing with that. So first, we have self-service users. So we have not much control over what users are doing. So basically, we alert all the users and make them aware of GDPR and that they are responsible for what they are doing. How we do this? So for example, we have software packages which, uh, with which we distribute Tableau Desktop to the computers. And before installation, you get a pop-up message where you have uh, some GDPR notice and information that you have to confirm you understood it before the installation even continues. So no user can say, I'm using Tableau, but I was not aware. Yeah? Also, we have welcome emails to onboard users with the same instructions. So we are using all kind of channels to make users aware of GDPR. And also with this, make them responsible to make it clear that what they are doing, they are responsible. We are kind of just providing the platform. Um, when we talk to the data protection officers, I was always comparing Tableau. It's like Excel or PowerPoint. We just give them the tool. What they do with it is up to them. Yeah, this was uh, a bit challenging, but finally with this picture, um, they were able to understand what Tableau is and how it works uh, with the self-service concept. But then we also have our admin team. Of course, we want to use the Postgres data to analyze usage and all this stuff. And of course, you have user data and usernames in there. So we had to collaborate very closely with our data protection officer, several sessions and meetings um, to come to some agreement how we can deal with it. And the main outcome was that we need to restrict access so we still can do the analysis, but we always need to kind of document the legitimate interest um, why we are doing this or that analysis and to which people we provide it. So in Tableau Blueprint, as one example, there is recommendation to share the list of all Tableau users with everyone. <laughs> of course, I got a big no-go <laughs> from our data protection officer, um, but at least I could argue that all the creator users need access to the full user list because they need to know with whom they can share their content that they publish. 
So I was at least allowed to share the full user list with all the creator users with this argumentation, but I was not allowed to share it with the fewer users because I didn't find arguments why the fewer users should see all the others on the server. So that's one example. We can still do usage analysis, but we have to carefully um, yeah, think about with whom we are sharing this data. Okay, then overall, um, when you talk about governance or self-service BI, you always um, have two opposing forces at work. So you have the IT who wants to control the creation and distribution of BI assets, and you have the information workers which want freedom and flexibility without requiring or depending on IT. So uh, to implement self-service BI successfully, you need to find the right balance and middle ground between those two opposing forces. And on the next slides, I will, on a high level, show you how we deal with this topic. So um, initially, our general strategy is like you see here, these wild horses in one of our German quarries that help to keep the grass down, um, which helps the endangered species. Um, and uh, is good for the environment. So we try to provide more freedom, let the horses wild, the users don't tame them too much. So we try to do everything as small, simple, easy, avoid unnecessary overhead, and with the main goal to reduce the time to value. So initially give them freedom, let them work with the tool, don't restrict them too much. But what's important then with this strategy is that you need to closely monitor what they are doing or what's happening. And then with the monitoring, you need to learn about it and do some iterations and improve. So when necessary, when you learn it through the monitoring, um, then you put in place more fences and you try to tame your horses like we see that on this picture. Um, but only as much as needed, yeah? So you can stepwise increase that. <laughs> Um, based on what's uh, necessary, kind of, and what works and, and whatever. So always custom specific. So one example, how we deal with content management now after we introduce the governance part. So we have a single server and we also have just a single site on our server because we want to, um, yeah, foster collaboration and sharing among the users. So the isolation level of sites um, so far was not needed and we didn't do it. So we manage all the permissions on the project level. And as you see here, uh, BU stands for business unit. So each business unit or project um, gets their own um, set of uh, projects on the Tableau server. And we, following the best practice, we separate data and content. So we have a separate data source project for the business unit, and we have a promotion workflow from sandbox to production. So overall, each business unit will get three different projects. And then on top, we have the so-called general sandbox and general data source folders or projects. Um, that are open to everyone. And there we unlock the permissions so the user can uh, themselves kind of decide to whom they want to publish and how they want to restrict the access to their content. And this works quite well. We also have a personal sandbox that's just for each individual user for himself. Um, we use uh, Active Directory groups to manage all the permissions, so there is no direct uh, assignment in the Tableau server. Um, it's all done with AD groups. And our business unit project leaders are able to assign the AD groups themselves. So they don't need us to uh, provide access to more viewer users. Um, however, we are now very strict on the creation of those three projects for each business unit, because we only do this when it's already big enough. So they have a large number of users, a uh, good amount of content that they are creating, and uh, especially they have an owner, a project leader, who takes over the governance part for this project, yeah? with user assignments, um, content management, and so on. Only if this is given, they will get this. For all the rest, they have to live with the general sandbox. 
And the good thing is that this general sandbox project needs zero administration from us. So all creators can use it and they can share it to all the viewers and customize permissions. And that's very handy. We also implemented automated housekeeping to remove old and unused content. So um, first the users get warned, then uh, it's moved to a recycle bin, and finally content will be deleted. So another aspect of um, governance is license management. I mentioned before that we are very cost cautious, um, so and we are on the new named user subscription license model from Tableau. So we pay for every user. So we need to make sure that only active users have a license assigned and the, that we get rid of the inactive users. So this was based on a script um, uh, that uh, we got uh, from a Tableau scripting expert out of the consulting package. And we use this, for example, um, to track and remove the inactive users. So we can customize the thresholds. At the moment, we are using 60 days to notify users and 90 days to throw them out of the platform. Um, what we also do, um, we consider different aspects as we see here. So we consider the desktop usage. So in our software packages, we have the desktop usage tracking enabled. Um, we also track the login on the server or if they didn't use neither uh, the desktop nor the server. We are using the creation date of the user um, on Tableau as the last activity date. And um, uh, yeah, based on this, um, we are also uh, automatically downgrading license levels. So yesterday I was in a session where people talked about, yeah, it's challenging when you remove the user, all the content that the user owns is lost. So for this, um, we don't fully delete users, we just uh, adjust the license level to unlicensed. So the user is still there, the content is there, and the project leader could still reassign the content to the successor of this person or whatever. Um, so, um, and we can check this automatically. So we kind of check what permissions the user actually has on the Tableau server assigned and match it with his license level. So we had somehow cases that over time, a user had only permissions uh, to few content, but he was assigned an explorer or creator license. So we automatically downgrade those users to the appropriate license level. And as they are not able to do anything more anyways, there is no impact to the user. So we just do this silently without even notifying users. Um, and also if we remove the AD groups from users completely, um, we are also putting them automatically to unlicensed, um, so that's quite handy. We do it automatically, as mentioned, um, and up to now, we already saved 33,000 US dollars in yearly license costs with this, and of course, the numbers are continuously increasing. So that's uh, very important that the cleanup script for users is writing some logs that we can build a dashboard on to show our management the success and give them some saving numbers. Um, and this also convinced our management to um, uh, kind of give us more freedom in providing access to more users because now we can prove we also remove the inactive users. We have it under control, we manage it actively. So that's another dashboard um, that we use on a more high level perspective to um, see the user activity um, per country. You can also um, select, for example, to view it by project um, or even by active directory role, uh, the percentage of active, new or inactive users and also by license type. Again, with a configurable threshold and all the numbers will adjust. So now let's move from governance to the deployment part and start with our actual deployment setup. So we have one production server um, at the moment, so single node, and we have two additional sandbox servers, but of course there are no business users on that. So these are just for IT internal testing. So one is our sandbox uh, that we use for upgrade testing and new versions, and one is kind of for support and regression testing. So if as part of a support case, we are asked to do some risky configuration changes. We don't want to do live in production. 
uh, we do this in the support environment that's very similar to, to the real production because the sandbox might have some new Blay version or whatever. Uh, this doesn't work. So that's the setup we are using. Then, as mentioned, we have software packages that we um, kind of, based on AD roles, um, publish to the users and from their Windows Software Center as a self-service, they can just click and install Tableau Prep or Tableau Desktop themselves. No interaction needed after they got the roles provided. We also are deploying the mobile app that we have integrated with AirWatch. Um, so we have VPN from external mobile networks to connect to internal Tableau servers um, that are also published via in our internal app store that the mobile team uh, is providing. So we are using all these uh, available services from the general IT colleagues we have. As a fallback, we also provide Tableau Desktop via Citrix, um, but our general approach is uh, use it on your own computer. But we have some countries that are on a syncline concept where this doesn't work, or sometimes there are firewall restrictions that data source owners of the database don't want to open their SQL ports to the whole company network. So then we can negotiate, okay, just open it for our Citrix servers, and then users have to go to Citrix if they need to connect those systems. Um, we also, as most users, are still working with flat file data. We are providing a central file share tab data. I really like that name. <laughs> um, and um, this is connected to the Tableau server. So this makes the refresh process of the flat files much more easy for the users. So they can just update the file on the file share and either with an extract job or um, with a live connection, Tableau automatically uses the newest data without users having to always update and republish the workbooks. Yeah? So they can just update the data and that's it. Um, here are our experiences um, we made with HANA or uh, BW. So without HANA, basically SAP only offers the so-called MDX interface, which actually has so many functional and performance limitations that it's not usable. Um, technically, it works, but basically our message is to users, you can't use it, or at least not live. With BW for HANA, there are several things that meanwhile we were able to confirm they are working, at least for us, and a lot of things that are not yet working. So for example, we can use uh, live connections as recommended via ODBC directly to the HANA database and still leverage the row level security or in SAP terminology, the analysis authorizations from BW uh, when connecting. We're still struggling with the single sign-on from Tableau server uh, to HANA. This in general should work according to Tableau, but somehow, uh, we're still um, in the process of getting this working. Uh, based on a how-to in the internet, we uh, made it work to do a currency conversion in HANA on the fly based on a parameter from Tableau. So users can choose the target currency and HANA calculates it on the fly based on the t tables in SAP. Um, Multi-language support, we have official confirmation that's not supported yet. So that's a big uh, drawback for us at the moment. Um, and also the hierarchies, you need to manually flatten them so there is no native support um, for BW hierarchies. There is a beta driver available, but this only supports the HANA native hierarchies at the moment, which are different. Um, and at the end, the hierarchies, we came to the conclusion they are not really user-friendly for self-service users, so for now, we will not offer this at all. Uh, it's also a big limitation. Um, where we are in discussions with Tableau about adding such functionalities in the connectors. So now uh, looking at education. So uh, we launched uh, an internal trainer program and here you see our trainer team. Many thanks, by the way, to our Tableau account team who lend us these nice speaking bubbles to get some uh, nice pictures there. Um, so the first two trainings we delivered via Tableau uh, to, to speed and we didn't have the internal knowledge. And then again, due to cost saving measures, um, we had to come up with a cheaper way than the official Tableau trainer certification program or the official Tableau trainings. So we were very happy uh, that we found the information lab as a consulting partner uh, to establish our training program and educate internal trainers and interestingly, we have trainers 
not only from IT, but also from business departments. Actually, I never expected this, but I asked all the users, is someone interested to become an internal trainer? Um, which means you also have to train other departments. So you're not only focusing on your own work, but um, you're kind of contributing to the community. And actually, we found two business people that are now part of the trainer team as well. And here you see some of the achievements, which I think are very impressive. So we always, also with our events, with the trainings, we do a lot of feedbacks uh, and surveys from the user to continuously improve and learn what they need and how happy they are. So for the training, uh, at the moment, the average is 8.9 out of 10 points, uh, how satisfied they are with our trainings. Um, meanwhile, we have more than 90 users trained, so that's almost half of the 200 creator users. Um, and just in the last two months, we had five trainings with more than 60 participants, so 10 to 15 in each training. And um, I think that was a massive improvement there. And at the end, by using internal trainers, we up to now already saved 20,000 euro in external trainer costs that we don't need anymore. So many thanks to Information Labs uh, for enabling us um, uh, to achieve this. I think that's uh, really a great success and helps to scale the enablement much further when you are able uh, to train users internally. Um, yeah. Finally, looking at the community activities that we are uh, doing. So we are rolling out a big amount of the Office 365 tool stack in the company as well. And we are one of the early adopters trying to use the new tools where applicable. So we use Microsoft Teams for collaboration. And we use the SharePoint Online uh, as an information page for the users um, where they find information about requesting access, license costs, whatever. Um, and information mainly for creator users, how to work in our environment. Um, and also we are doing a lot of events. So we're having the bi-weekly user meetings where users share their work and collaborate, where we provide updates about news uh, in the environment. We also organize the Tableau Day. So many thanks here again to our Tableau account team who made this work. So I somehow couldn't even believe, but we managed that the very famous Andy Cotgrieve made its way to Heidelberg uh, to present a very inspiring keynote on our Tableau day um, for the users. Um, so thanks again um, uh, for to Tableau to make this work. We are having lunch and learn meetings where we watch some webinars or videos over lunchtime because otherwise people usually don't find the time to watch a video during work. <laughs> but this worked quite well. Um, people are happy if they get a pizza or some sandwiches or whatever um, and watch a video to learn. We also launched the first contest, which I will show in a second, and we are offering the doctor days or doctor sessions um, for enablement. We are also tracking the adoption and the usage. So um, we have here tracking of uh, absolute amount of users or the amount of looks or clicks on the server uh, that we see by project and also the most or top workbooks that are used. It's also interactive, so if you click on a project, the workbooks will filter and just show the top workbooks from this project. Um, and we also see a steady increasing trend, like um, since the last six months, doubling uh, the number of users and doubling the number of looks. Um, initially, there was a, a low peak here because this was exactly, I was also, surprised why that is, but actually this was the week between Christmas and New Year, so no one was working there. <laughs> uh, this explains that dip here. And we also see where the users are located, and of course, if you filter on a project, uh, the locations will update for users of this project. Also, um, our CIO wanted to know some license statistics. Somehow we thought it doesn't fit in this dashboard, but we found a way to use it in the tooltip <laughs> to not overload the initial dashboard. So this would be what our management would really like. You have this small amount of creator users that provide content that's consumed by the big masses and the fuel licenses are cheaper. <laughs> so they are very happy with uh, this project, for example, and you can analyze it even more. So, this was our contest, the first one that we launched. Um, as we got more and more content, uh, we thought it would be important that users provide descriptions and tags so the consumers can easier find the content. So as you see here, 
um, we had just 16 users that were using tags at all. And basically, you can see your own score, how many tags per workbook in average you use. And I told our users, look, I really hope that at the end of the contest, I will no longer be on second place. <laughs> uh, that should be the, the case here. But um, yeah, so we're trying to uh, incentivize this. So of course, uh, the top people will get some Tableau prizes, mouse pads, coffee mugs, whatever, t-shirts. Um, um, yeah, so now looking into the future, um, we will enhance and continue our training program. For now, we just provided the desktop one training. We also want to look into desktop two trainings and visual analytics trainings. So we focus more on visual best practices, standardizing style templates probably, um, and also do much more monitoring on the server and proactive uh, actions um, to improve the platform. And also we want to provide more curated data sources to make data accessible more easily to users. So to wrap it up, what are the key takeaways? Um, so I would say first uh, learning is you can start small and then iterate and grow on your own speed. So even on low budget, you can start using Tableau. Um, especially do not wait until something is perfect. Don't wait until you have a governance concept ready. Give it just in the hands of users and then in parallel work on improving all those things and putting in place the fences uh, that I talked about before. Um, also, yeah, I already mentioned that governance can be added later. Make use of the available online resources. So we didn't all invent this, so the public community and materials are really great that are available. Use all the videos, the recordings from previous TC sessions, uh, the blog articles, the online help, what else, webinars from partners, but also from Tableau. So there is so much available. And if you have the chance uh, and some budget for that, then think about using enterprise adoption consulting as an accelerator to overcome internal resource skill gaps and um, yeah, accelerate the adoption uh, to what you would be able to do without that. Yeah. So to start off the discussion, um, those would be topics I would be interested in, but of course you can ask me anything. So how do you engage users and drive community? Um, how do you identify and engage the data stewards? That's a big challenge for us to find people in business departments to take over these roles because in traditional BI, it was always done by IT. Yeah, it's a complete shift of mindset. Yeah, experience is about BW for HANA integration. Maybe teaming up to influence the Tableau product roadmap and increase the pressure that we are not alone requesting such features like hierarchy support or multi-language support. Uh, how do you deal with GDPR? So then, reminder, everyone is asked to do that. Uh, please do the evaluation in the event app. I'm very happy to receive honest feedback um, if this would be valuable. I hope so. Um, and then let's start the discussion. 